Phonetics looks at human speech from three distinct but interdependent viewpoints. Articulatory phonetics studies how speech sounds are produced. Auditory phonetics studies the way in which humans perceive speech sounds and acoustic phonetics studies the physical properties of speech. Now the names of these branches all use an initial letter A. Alternatively you could use a P and associate these branches with speech production, auditory phonetics with the perception of speech and acoustic phonetics with the physics of speech. So here you have your initial characters P. A good way to remember these disciplines. Let us look at the main goals of these branches first. Articulatory phonetics investigates how speech sounds are produced. For example, speech sounds such as these vowels here. E, or to use a second one, the vowel U. Or let's take consonants such as this one as in pa versus well let's take a more exotic one this one here as in ah now the production and the description of these segments of speech involves some basic understanding of speech anatomy for example some knowledge about the lungs and the question how the lungs produce the necessary energy in form of a stream of air or let's look at the larynx next so here is the larynx which serves as a modifier to the airstream and is responsible for phonation well, and last but not least, the vocal tract itself. Now, here is the vocal tract. And the vocal tract modifies and modulates the airstream by means of several articulators. Let's mark those articulators which are actively involved in the modification of the airstream. That's those four active articulators. Now furthermore since all these speech sounds involve some sort of air we have to look at the central airstream mechanisms because so you see without airstream nothing will happen. So let's look at the airstream mechanisms in some detail. Now, whereas in English all speech sounds are initiated by outward going aggressive air from the lungs, other languages may use additional ways of producing an airstream. The following airstream mechanisms can theoretically be used in human speech. Well, most languages, in fact all languages, use speech sounds that are produced with egressive, that is outward going pulmonic, i.e. from the lungs coming air. So, egressive pulmonic air, as in pa, for example. Now, you could use this ingressively, that is inward directed, in situations when you sob or cry, such as pa. So this was an ingressive pulmonic airstream, but you will certainly agree that this is a rather exceptional situation. So let's put this in brackets and mark it with a minus. 
the glottalic egressive airstream which is produced here in the larynx of course exists in many languages it can be used egressively in sounds such as a or a and it can be used ingressively as in sounds like ga or ga so here we have the ingressive glottalic airstream and the egressive one coming from the glottis and finally we have the velaric airstream which cannot be used egressively it is produced here in the vocal tract itself but in an ingressive form it can be used in sounds such as and here I like this one ah the symbol is nice isn't it for a kiss it's this phonetic symbol so it can be used The combination of anatomical properties and the respective airstream allows us to precisely define all speech sounds that are used in natural language where two types can be differentiated. Vowels and consonants. Now vowels allow an almost free passage of air through the vocal tract. The example that you can see here to my right is E. And you see the airstream passes freely through the vocal tract and the lips have to be spread. Consonants by contrast involves some sort of obstruction to the airstream in the vocal tract. Here we have the example of k as in a ka. Again, a ka. And you see, during the consonantal posture, some sort of closure has been created. Now, vowels and consonants are the basic segments of speech, just like the notes are basic segments in music. Together, vowels and consonants form syllables, they form larger units, and eventually utterances. Superimposed on the segments are a number of additional features known as suprasegmental or prosodic features. They do not characterize a single segment, but a succession of segments. The most important suprasegmental features are stress, loudness, pitch, and length. And then we also have aspects such as secondary articulation. Now in music, to draw the parallel again, suprasegmental features would be something like crescendo or something like diminuendo or forte, to name a few. The two remaining branches of phonetics are often treated in an interdisciplinary way by means of a combination with psychology, anatomy, acoustics, physiology, to name a few. Let us briefly discuss them. Auditory phonetics investigates the processes underlying human speech perception. The starting point for an auditory analysis of speech is the study of the human hearing system. that is, the anatomy and physiology of the ear and the brain. Since the hearing system cannot react to all features present in a sound wave, it is essential to determine what we perceive and how we perceive it. This enormously complex field is referred to as speech perception. Well, if you want to find out more about this field, consult our e-lecture pre-lexical processing one. Acoustic phonetics, and here you see some machines, studies the physical properties of the speech signal. This includes the physical characteristics of human speech, such as the frequency patterns involved, the analysis of friction noise, etc. There are numerous factors that complicate the straightforward analysis of the speech signal. For example, background noise, anatomical and physiological differences between me and you, and many more. 
These and other aspects contribute to the overall speech signal and are studied under the heading of acoustic phonetics. This e-lecture is just an overview of the field. In future e-lectures about phonetics, we will concentrate on articulatory phonetics and discuss the details of segmental and suprasegmental phonetics. We will look at consonants, at vowels, we will discuss aspects of stress, pitch, loudness and will illustrate our findings with numerous examples from the language index of the virtual linguistics campus. By the way, in the toolbox, here is your toolbox, you have permanent free access to our interactive consonantal and vowel charts and many more. So join us. Okay, that's it for now. See you again in one of our e-lectures on phonetics and, if you like, on the Virtual Linguistics Campus.